Hey everybody, happy Wednesday, June 6, 2022, middle of the week. Hope you're having a great one. Thank you for joining me today, and my name is Mona with Journey of Purpose Life Coaching. We've been looking at seasons and reasons of my life, just for all of you out there to get to know me a little better. So we've been looking at little things that have happened or big things that have happened to me, how I call them seasons in my life, and maybe some reasons along that fact of why these are, or maybe why I call them a season. Today we're going to be looking at transplant recipient. I've covered over the last two days um, adoption, which was, um, the reason was because I have polycystic kidney disease, so we talked about that on um, Monday, and um, adoption was last Friday, and today is kind of going along that process of transplant recipient, and that's me. I'm going on 17 years in February with a renal transplant um, date, anniversary. It was um, a living donor kidney from a friend, and it's funny how things all work together, isn't it? My kidney recipient um, went to high school with me. She was five years younger than me. Her brother was in my brother's class, and her sister was a year behind me. And I'm not sharing names today. I love my kidney sister to the moon and back, but I didn't get permission to share names, so we're just gonna go with it this way. And we reunited as Cub Scout leaders how many years later when we all had little boys. And there were five boys between the two families and they all became the best of friends. And even today, um, my youngest and one of hers still are in contact, but I'm in contact with the family. You know, it's not anything happened, just life gets busy and things like that, but how friendships were even formed through that. I spent a little under two years on dialysis, going three times a week. 5 a.m. in the morning was my start time. I got off about 9, and it was, Monday, or it was Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, and then I'd kind of run home, get some sleep before my boys got out of school, and then I would go pick them up. And this is what my life kind of consisted of for a little under two years, like I said. It was an adjustment. Um, Going on dialysis wasn't my first choice. I had hoped that when I was first diagnosed that they'd have a cure before my kidneys failed, and then I hoped there was a cure before I went on dialysis. And then by that time, yeah, the transplants come, but I still even prayed for a cure, you know, that I wouldn't necessarily go through the transplant process. I'm thankful, so thankful, so thankful for that transplant. But like I said yesterday, it's not a cure. It's just a different form of life. It will be anti-rejection drugs for the rest of my life. It'll be doctor's appointments and blood draws and urine tests and on and on and on. Because I don't know if I explained yesterday, the um, or not yesterday, but on Monday, the purpose of the kidney is how it excretes all toxins out of your body. So you, the kidney, even though we have two, you can live with one, but you need that to excrete the toxins. And when you don't have that, it causes real havoc. You know, your body just fills up with all the toxins. And so as I think about the transplant and what it's done for my life, yeah, I still have meds and doctor's appointments, but it's not that schedule, you know, of going to dialysis three days a week. I chose really early in the morning. That way um, my boys just had some with them in the, in the morning to get them ready for school. And then I tried to make it as normal in their life as possible. I did not choose to run on dialysis at home, so it took me into the dialysis center. And the transplant was done at the University of Washington here in Seattle, and I love them. I've referred many of them. My brother had his transplant in 2020, and he lives out of state, but the University of Washington was one of the places they chose that he could go to. So he came over how many years later and had his transplant at the same hospital. But that's kind of his story to tell, and I might touch a little bit more on his story on Friday, but really I'll try and keep it to my story so that I don't impinge on anyone else's stories to tell and things like that. But I don't know if you've ever considered being a donor. Kidney, it can take up to five years for a kidney recipient to re receive a kidney donation. And we, I was fortunate enough to have a living donor. There are cadaver donors you can get also. There's different ways to do that. There's different programs where if you can, can't help me, you might be able to help someone else 
in another family and someone in that family may be able to turn around and help me see so it's just amazing how it works out there if you've ever considered donation hey Hannah thanks for watching so I just want to say that um, over the years it's just been amazing my heart's been blessed with that many emotions again like I say it seems like a lot of my seasons and reasons have mixed emotions in them and I'm very grateful. And when you do a transplant, they uh, treat that, um, the donor has to go through a rigorous, you know, they really check that person out, make sure physically, emotionally, all of that, that that's really what they want to do. There's about four or five markers that they want you to match with, with the recipient. And I believe mine matched four out of five, even four and a half out of five. So we were very closely matched. And it was amazing. Um, we got to be on the same floor of the hospital. We went in together in that morning. And that doesn't always happen. I think that differs by hospitals how they do that. But the transplant, um, for someone to compromise or give up, I'm, trying, I'm blanking on the correct term here to use, but you know, my medical paid for all of her medical. But she took time off from work, she had three little boys, she was married, and so it, it takes, sometimes their recovery time is a little bit harder for the person donating, but I think that's because the, person, the recipient's kind of gone through a lot up to that point, about how it plays out. But that has really changed my life, and I wish to this day that I could help someone. I don't think I have organs that I really can donate to. But it's something for people to think about. It's something for you, if you know someone who's going through that, who has chronic illness, maybe it's you that has a chronic illness, and even if it is a transplant patient, the things that you go through that you feel, it's always important to have someone that you can share feelings with that will understand. Now, setting that aside, no one can totally understand what you're going through, but they might have some empathy or some idea if they've gone through something similar. Even me as a kidney transplant, I'm not going through exactly what someone else may go through as a kidney transplant, but it still causes an, a time where you may go to meet on a plane and have similar feelings and you can relate. So I'm just set, putting this out there. This is another step of my life um, as a transplant. Um, my little boy, he, uh, oh, I was going to share one more story because I talked about my oldest one, how he was going to drop out of school on Monday and join me along the ride for dialysis. My youngest one kind of set up to the plate when my kidney was going, was waffling side to side. It looked like it was rejecting, but it wasn't rejecting, and they were trying to control it with medications. And so my youngest one, second grade, decided that he was going to go talk to the doctors because I had to go in on a Saturday. They were going to IV me up with some some uh, prednisone and he was very upset you were going to fix my mom's kidney our friend fixed my mom and blah 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 so i'm thinking okay great i'm going to let him go with me hey carolyn nice to see you so we get down to the u-dub it's a saturday morning and this kid doesn't usually work, wake up on a saturday morning so you know he was kind of concerned and he gets in there and he starts telling the doctor that you know you were going to fix my mom our friend gave the kidney and what are you going to do about this and da, 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 da. so cute doctor he was a fellow at the time going into nephrology and he looks at my son and he said hey you see that pop machine over there and he said yeah yeah and he didn't know what that had to do with anything and so the doctor said if i give you a dollar and you go grab a cherry coke out of that machine what if i tell you by the time you're done drinking mom's kidney's going to be fine so he kind of ruffled up his face and marched over to that pot machine. He didn't know what that had to do with anything. Well, in the doctor's defense, he knew that they were going to put me on prednisone. He knew it was going to go right into the vein. It was an IV. And he knew that that would settle the kidney down. But I, I think he did that on a couple different levels. He didn't want um, my youngest to be afraid of needles and IVs, which wouldn't have bothered them. And it also kept him preoccupied to do think of something else rather than the focus. Well, sure enough, we walked out of that hospital, cherry coke was down, and my kidney was fine. So that was just a story I had told you all that I would share about each one of my sons because um, if you weren't at the last one when we talked about, about PKD and dialysis, um, my oldest son was going to drop out of school and sit with me every day on dialysis. So that's my story for the transplant and my youngest son, how it does affect the whole family. Um, they all have their own feelings. They all deal with it differently. And to this day, I am just very honored to have my kidney sister. I have to say I'm honored for the um, lady who stepped up for my brother out of state 
and she ended up living only a mile and a half away from him. Um, and that's another story. I'll share a little bit about him, what we did to help him. But in the long run, um, it's nothing I regret. I'm very grateful. I can't say it over and over again. But it is, it is a season. It's a season. And there's many reasons for that season. And um, if you can just find good in every season and good in every morning when you wake up and be and show gratitude. And especially when someone like my friend helped me. And I had 10 people um, that had stepped up. Even my oldest son's birth mom stepped up to donate, and they never told me, none of them ever told me, times have changed a lot now, how we did it for my brother. But back almost 17 years ago, my friends and family went right to the hospital, UW, found out how they could help. And um, it was just amazing to me that um, if my friend didn't work, the one that was able to donate, there were five other um, Cub Scout moms standing beside her. So anyway, that's my story for transplant. I hope I've kind of covered it for you. If not, always um, reach out to me. I have tons I could tell you about. I'm trying to keep this to not too long so you guys stay with me with that. Um, but it's not, a, it's not something I don't mind talking about. I love to help people that have gone through similar experiences, whether it's how to get through the journey of the transplant, pre-transplant, post-transplant. You know, what happens after you get the transplant? Um, are there changes in your life you need to make? What are you feeling like? You know, getting a transplant can make you feel a little different sometimes. So just whatever that may be, I hope that what I've shared today hits home for someone. And if they're not listening to me now, if you would share with them, and that would be great. Until Friday, enjoy the journey, be empowered, and live on purpose. Bye-bye. Thank you.